Israel is real. I'm back with the next lesson is Israel walking and living in the spirit. All right. We went over the works of the flesh. We went over that. Now we're going to get into how to walk and live in the spirit because that's what we must do. All right. But before we go there, I want to get into a little encouraging words. Um, I know everybody is like scared and fearing over this coronavirus thing, you know what I mean? And um, I, I got my views on it, so I'm not going to touch too much on that. But I just want to give some scriptures to encourage those that's like scared, you know, those that's fearing this thing. And um, yeah, so let's jump into it. Let's, let's read a little bit of scriptures because, you know, it's going to be... Regardless, you know, what I mean, it's going to be evils upon this earth. You know what I'm saying? We in the last days. So it's like the most I said is going to get wicked and wicked. You know what I mean? So, but whatever, you know what I mean? If it's a real thing, um, we still not supposed to be scared because we know the most high controls everything. You see what I'm saying? We know the most high controls all things. So it's like, why fear? You know what I mean? Um, but like I said, I'm not going to touch into it too much because I have my views on it, but this is just to encourage you Israel to keep going, you know what I mean? And don't let, you know, the media and stuff they put out there and, you know, and don't let it get to you. Don't, don't fear. You know what I mean? The more you fear into it, the more you feed into it and fear into it. And, um, <clears throat> the more you're going to be thinking, the more you're going to, you know, be in panic, you know what I mean? But, um. You're not to be scared, you know what I mean? No, whatever is going on in this earth, because we know the most high is our power, he's our protector, he's our shield and defense. So it's like, as long as we know what we're doing, what we're supposed to be doing, which is staying away from the flesh, walking in the spirit, doing what we're supposed to do, he's going to protect us. You see what I'm saying? So those, there's no need to fear. Now, if we're not doing what we need to do, you see what I'm saying? Then, we, then we're going to be scared because, you know what I'm saying, we're supposed to be doing what we're supposed to be doing. So that the most high can protect us no matter what comes our way. You see what I'm saying? Um, but that's why I'm talking talking about walking in the spirit today. Because as long as we're doing what we're supposed to do, what the most high requires us to do, we shouldn't fear. Why have fear? You know what I'm saying? Why be scared of what man is telling us? And you know what I'm saying? Like I said, go back. Whether it's real or not. It still shouldn't matter because you know the most high is your protection, Israel. But I'm not going to talk too much. This is to encourage you, you know, my brothers and sisters out there that's maybe panicking and, you know, a little scared of, of what's going on and what's being said. So I'm here to uplift you with words of encouragement from the word of God. Okay. And to you strangers also, that's um, into the truth. Um... Encourage for you too, you know, to keep going, don't fear, be strong, you know. All right, let's head over to Romans chapter 8, verse 31, Israel. Romans chapter 8 and verse 31. Like I said, as long as we know that, what, as long as we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, there's no need to be scared because the most high going to protect us. You see what I'm saying? Romans 8 and 31. What shall we say then? Excuse me. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, if God be for us, Israel, who can be against us? So if God be for us, who can be against us? What, what could come our way? You see what I'm saying? If we got the most high on our side. You see what I'm saying? If God is for us, who could be against us? He forms the light. He created the darkness. He made peace. He created I, the Lord, do all these things. So he controls all things. So it's like, we don't need the fear. You know what I'm saying? The Lord is going to protect us if we're doing what we need to do. Okay. So let's read that again. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Set over to 1 John chapter 4 verse 4. First John chapter four, verse four, ye are of God, little children and have overcome them. So 
we're going to get, after I finish these scriptures, we're going to jump straight into the lesson of walking and living in the spirit, Israel, which we're supposed to be doing. We're going to understand more about becoming the children of God, the sons of God. You understand what I'm saying? What is, what do that mean? We're going to get into that. All right. So the Bible says, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So greater is he that is in you, Israel, than he that is in the world. You see what I'm saying? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Let's head over to John, John 16 and 33. Let's we'll see what Christ said to us. John 16 and 33. And Jesus said, these things have I spoken unto you. So these things have I spoken unto you. That in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. Because remember I said we got it. We, we're going to be tried as gold in the fire, Israel, our faith. So in the world we're going to have tribulation. But be of good cheer, the Most High said he overcome the world. Let's read that. He said, in the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So Christ have overcome the world. You see what I'm saying? So in Christ, we have peace. This is why we got to put on Christ. You see what I'm saying? We're baptized into Christ, into his death. So we're dead to sin. You see what I'm saying? So we have now put on Christ. All right. Walking in the newness. So he said, um, let's read that again. These things have I spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world. Ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Okay, let's head over to be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Let's head over to second Ezra's real quick. And we're going to jump to 15, 1 to 27. All right. And it reads, behold, he's, so the Most High is talking to Ezra. He's, he's telling Ezra something. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people. So he said to Ezra, speak thou in the, in the ears of my people. That's the children of Israel. The words of prophecy, which thou shalt put in thy mouth, save the Lord, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and they are true. Fear not the imaginations against thee. So he's talking to Israel. He's telling Ezra to talk to Israel, right? To tell Israel these things. Fear not the imaginations against thee. He said, fear not the imaginations against thee, Israel. You see what I'm saying? Why be scared? Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulia of them trouble thee that speak against thee. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world. So plagues upon the world. You see what I'm saying? Just like Jesus told us, there will be pestilence and things in the end times. You see what I'm saying? All of these are the beginning of sorrows. But the end is not yet. All right. Remember, I'm not saying this thing is real or is it fake. I'm just saying I have my views on it, which I'm not going to talk about right now. But. This is just to encourage those, my brothers and sisters, that's fearing, that's scared. Okay. Um, so he said, Be, behold, save the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death and destruction for wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth and their hurtful works are fulfilled. Therefore, save the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness which they profanely commit, neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly, excuse me, in, in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me and the souls of the just complain continually and therefore save the Lord, I will surely avenge them and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them. Behold my people. So he said, behold my people. That's the children of Israel. Is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. So Egypt just means the house of bondage. Israel is in all nations, which we are in captivity still. Like he told Ezra, until the to the affliction of Zion is fulfilled because the Gentiles is trodden down Jerusalem. 
until the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. So Egypt is the house of bondage. In Egypt, our people was in bondage, slavery. We're still in captivity in the nations. But in America and stuff, they make you think because we don't have the shackles on, the physical shackles and chains that we're free, Israel. But we're not. But Christ, is he redeemed us and made us free. We're free through Christ. You see what I'm saying? That's why when he comes back, he's coming back to gather us and bring us back to his land and plant us back in his land. But that's for something else. So he said, behold, my people was led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. Meaning with, with the time of Moses in the, in the land of Egypt, when he um, smote Egypt with plagues before. All right. As before, and will destroy all the land thereof. Egypt shall mourn. And the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that God shall bring upon it. They that till the ground shall mourn, for their seed shall fail through the blasting in hell and with a fearful consolation. Woe to the world. So notice he said he's going to send the plagues upon Egypt. But now he's saying woe to the world. Why is he saying woe to the world? Because the plagues is coming upon the whole world. Woe to the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draw of nigh, and one people shall stand up to fight against another, and swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men, and evading one another. So their sedition, we know, if you look up, there's riotings and seditions in many countries today. And it's going to just increase, 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 increase. But there shall be sedition among men, and evading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes. That's true. And the course of their actions shall stand in their power. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. Behold, say of God, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun, from the south, from the east. So I'm not trying to break all of this down in this for now. We're just talking about the plagues coming upon the world. I'm showing you that whether Israel or not, any diseases will not come upon us, Israel. Um, reverence to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun, from the south, from the east and Lebanon to turn themselves one against another and repay the things that they have done to them. Like as they do yet this day unto my chosen, so will I do also in recompense in their bosom. Thus saith the Lord God, my right hand shall not spare the sinners. Right? So notice he said, my right hand shall not spare the sinners. So remember, we're getting into what? The law lesson. We, we, we went over the law lesson, the works of the flesh. Now we get into the fruit of the spirit. All right? Because if we're doing what we got to do, the, no evil is going to come upon us, Israel. All right, so he said, um, in their bosom, thus, thus saith the Lord God, my right hand shall not spare sinners, and my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. The fire is going forth from his wrath and have consumed the foundation of the earth and the sinners, like the straw that is kindled. Woe to them that sin and keep not my commandments, saith the Lord God. See, because remember we talked about the law and the inward man, right? This is what we're talking about in the law lesson. Stay, remember, we got to stay away from the flesh and walk in the spirit because Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to them that believe. We're going to keep talking about that as we go on in the lessons. All right. I will not spare them. Go your way, ye children from the power. Defile not my sanctuary. For the Lord knoweth all them that sin against him. And therefore, deliver he them into death and destruction. So, if we doing what we need to do, then we know the Lord ain't going to deliver us into death and destruction. He's going to protect us. You see what I'm saying? For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth, and ye shall remain in them. You see what I'm saying? Because the elect of God is going to go through the great tribulation too. That's why Jesus said immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened. And the moon shall not give a light. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. 
That's why I said in Revelations, um, John X, uh, there was the angel. He said, "What? Wh who are these that are arrayed in white? And he said, these are they that came out of, these are they that washed their, these are they that came out of great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the land because they're going to be tried as gold in the fire. And he said, um, let's continue, but that's for something else. For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth and ye shall remain in them for God shall not deliver you because ye have sinned against him. All right. So that's pretty much all I want there. Now let's head over to second Ezra chapter 16. And let's jump over to let's jump over to thirteen to fifty four. For strong is his right hand, talking about the most high that bendeth the bow, his arrows that he shooteth are sharp, and shall not miss when they begin to, to be shot in the ends of the world. Excuse me, behold the plagues are sent, and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consumed the foundation of the earth, like as an arrow, which is shot of a mighty archer, returneth not backward. Even so the plagues that shall be sent upon you, excuse me, shall be sent upon the earth, shall not return again. Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? The beginning of sorrows, remember Christ said that in Matthew 24. The beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the powers shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Because we got to be what? Doing what we need to do, Israel. So if we doing what we need to do, we don't need to fear because the Lord going to protect us. Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. Behold, victuals shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall think themselves to be in a good case. And even then shall evils grow upon earth, swore famine and great confusion. And, excuse me, for many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. And the dead shall be cast out as dung, and there shall be no, there shall be no man to comfort them. For the earth shall be wasted, and the city shall be cast down. There shall be no man left to till the earth and to sow it. The trees shall give fruit, and who shall gather them? The grapes shall ripen, and who shall tread them? For all places shall be desolate of men, so that one man shall desire to see another, and to hear his voice. For of a city there shall be ten left, and two of the field, which shall hide themselves in the thick groves and in the clefts of the rocks, as in the orchid of olives upon every trees. There are left three or four olives, or as when a vineyard is gathered, there are left some clusters of them that diligently seek through the vineyard. Even so, in those days, there shall be three or four left by them that search their houses with the sword. And the earth shall be laid waste, and the fields thereof shall wax old. And her ways and all her paths shall grow full of thorns. The virgins shall mourn, having no bridegrooms. The women shall mourn, having no husbands. Their daughters shall mourn, having no helpers. In the wars shall their bridegrooms be destroyed, and their husbands shall perish of famine. Hear now these things, and understand them, ye servants of the Lord. The servants of the Lord is Israel. Behold the word of the Lord, receive it. Believe not the gods of whom the Lord spake. Behold, the plagues draw nigh, and are not slack. As when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son, within two or three hours of her birth great pains come past her womb. Which pains, when the child cometh forth, they slack not a moment. Even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth, and the world shall mourn, and sorrow shall come upon it on every side. O oh, my people, hear my word, make ye ready to the battle. So he said, make ye ready to the battle. You see what I'm saying? We're going to talk about that a little bit later. And in those evils, be ready. Excuse me. And in those evils, be even as pilgrims upon the earth. You see what I'm saying? Because you ain't going to be able to stay in one place. You're going to have to be moving. as we're constantly moving. He that selleth, let him be as he that fleeth away. And he that buyeth as one that would lose. He that occupieth merchandise as he that have no profit by it. And he that buildeth as, as he that shall not dwell therein. He that soweth as if he should not reap. 
So also he that planted the vineyard as he that shall not gather the grapes. They that marry as they shall get no children. And they that marry not as the widowers. And therefore they that labor, labor in vain. For strangers shall reap their fruits and spoil their goods, overthrow their houses and take their children captives for in captivity and famine shall they get children. And they that occupy their merchandise with robbery, the more they deck their cities, their houses, their possessions, and their own persons, the more will I be angry with them for their sins, say of the Lord. Like as a whore envieth a right, honest, and virtuous woman, so shall righteousness hate iniquity when she decketh herself. And shall cause her to, and shall accuse her to her face, excuse me, when he cometh that shall defend him that diligently search out, search out every sin upon the earth. And therefore be ye not like thereunto, nor to the works thereof. But yet a little, and iniquity shall be taken away out of the earth, and righteousness shall reign among you. Let not the sinner that, let not the sinner say that he have not sinned, for God shall burn coals of fire upon his head. Which said before the Lord God in his glory, I have not sinned. Behold, the Lord knoweth all the works of men, their imaginations, their thoughts, and their hearts. And that's pretty much it. So, we are not to fear Israel. You see what I'm saying? It don't matter what's going on in the world. As long as we doing what we're doing, that's all that matters. That we know the Lord will, you know, protect us. Put his hand over us. But if we not, then, then we all have to worry. You see what I'm saying? But this is why I'm um, doing the law lesson and, and showing us what we got to do. You know what I'm saying? How to walk with Christ. What we must do to be protected in these evil times. All right. So the plagues and that's going to come upon the whole earth. And just remember, this is encouraging. This is for the Israelites that's fearing. This is to encourage you. That's all it is. Um, all right. Let's head over to Psalms. Psalms 91, and let's read 1 to 10. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. So that means we got we to gotta be doing what we need to do so that we could be protected. You know what I'm saying? Walking in what? Righteousness. You see what I'm saying? Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to them that believe. Um, for what the Lord could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent forth his son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. I delight in the law of God after the inward man. So we got to stay away from the flesh and walk in the spirit of Israel. All right, we're going to talk about it when we jump into the law lesson. So he said, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. You see that? He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. What is his truth? Sanctify them through thy truth, Jesus said. Thy word is the truth. Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endure forever. The word. We got to put on the word, Christ. You see what I'm saying? So we can be protected. You see what I'm saying? We got to be walking how Christ is telling us to do, Israel. So we can be protected from the evils that's going to come upon this earth. All right. Um. So he said, under his wing shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield. And buckler, that's the word of God, which is spirit and life. Thou shall not be afraid. Matter of fact, let's, let's stop right there. So he said, his, let's read four again. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Because the Most High always protected us, you know what I'm saying, and kept us under his wings. Even from the beginning, he's going to do the same thing as long as we're doing what we need to be doing. Second Edges 1 and verse 30. The Most High is speaking to Ezra. He said, I gathered you. He's speaking to Israel, though. I gathered you together as a hen gathered her chicken, chickens under her wings. 
But now what shall I do unto you? I will cast you out of my face. So the most I always kept us under his wings, Israel. You can read that whole chapter from yourself, second Edges one chapter second second Edges chapter one and then read all the way up. But um he always protected us when we was doing what we needed to do. You see what I'm saying? Alright. So let's go let's go back. Let's go to jump down to verse five in Psalms ninety one. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrows that fly by day, nor for the pestilence, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and a thousand at thy excuse me, yeah, a thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. So if we doing what we need to be doing, the Lord gonna protect us. You see what I'm saying? He's going to put angels around us. Like it says in, I think it's Psalm 37 or 34. Um, said, uh, he said, um, let me see if I can get it. Yeah. Psalms 34 and 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. You see what I'm saying? Fear him. That's getting into his word and his, keeping his commandments, which is going to be in the inward man, Israel. Stay away from the flesh and walk in the, in the spirit. All right. We're going to talk about that. So he said, a thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand. So we got to hearken to his word. But it shall not come nigh thee. Because if you're doing what you need to be doing, that evil, all the evil stuff is going to come on the earth. And it's not going to come and, and touch you, Israel. You see what I'm saying? It's not going to come and touch you. But it shall not come nigh thee. Verse 8. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy inhabitation. There shall no evil before thee. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, Israel. So there's no need to be, to be scared of. Whatever's going on. You see what I'm saying? Because we know the Lord controls all things. You know what I mean? So there's no need to fear. You know what I'm saying? He's the Alpha and Omega. He controls all things. So if you're doing what you need to be doing, you ain't got nothing to worry about. All right. Let's head over to Isaiah 54 and 17. Because he always told us. Most I always spoke to our forefathers. He always talked to Israel and told them. Encouraging words. The most I always talk to us and give us words of encouragement, you know what I'm saying? Um to do what we need to do. You know what I'm saying? When we when we when we get out of hand, that's when the most high chasing us. Because he dealing with us like a father do his son. Alright, so let's go to I said Isaiah 54 and 17. Because the most high speaking to Israel, he said what? Verse 7, for a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. Hold on, I think I'm 54 and 7. Oh, 17, I'm sorry. Okay, let's jump down to 17, 54 and 17. No weapon that is formed against thee, Israel, shall prosper. And every tongue that, that, rise, that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the who? The servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So he said, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, Israel. So no matter what Satan is throwing our way or, or the powers that be, whatever it is, it's not going to prosper. Because we put on the, the word of God. You know what I'm saying? The armor and the sword of the spirit. You see what I'm saying? Because we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. So we put on the arm of God. We protect it. We walking in Christ. We, we go. We doing what we need to do. The Lord is going to protect us. If we not, then we in trouble. All right. So he said, no weapon formed against thee, Israel, shall prosper. Let's head over to Exodus 15 and 26 because the most high is our healer. That's why when he came in the flesh, he came to heal the Israelites. You see what I'm saying? He came to heal us. To turn us back to him. Um, he is our healer. 
like I said in uh, what was that Psalms uh, one hundred seven and twenty. He sent he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Right, and the word was made flesh, and and the word came and healed us also. But overall, the Most High is our healer. You see what I'm saying? In any situation, so we don't need to to fear Israel. Exodus 15 and 26. It don't matter what comes our way. It don't matter whatever it is. All things is possible with God. You see what I'm saying? But we got to be doing what we need to be doing, Israel. Exodus 15 and 26. And the Most High said, and said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. That's his word, Israel. And will do that which is right in his sight. And will do that which is right in his sight. And will give ear to his commandments. And keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee. Which I have brought upon the Egyptians. Right? So remember he, he said, we read in 2nd Ezra. The plagues that's going to come on Egypt, the whole world. You see what I'm saying? So he said, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I'm the Lord that healeth thee. I'm the Lord that healeth you, Israel. So there's no need to be scared because the Lord is our healer. You see what I'm saying? The Lord is our healer. Let's head over to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 3 to 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not what war after the flesh. So though we walk in the flesh, we don't war after the flesh. Right? For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So the weapons of our warfare is not carnal. Not like back in the days, you know what I'm saying, when we fought against the nations. Um, but yeah, back in the days in the nations when we fought against them, you know, physically, but now it's a spiritual warfare. You see what I'm saying? So whatever the powers that be or anybody is trying to throw our way, if we walking in crisis, bro, there's no need to be scared because the Lord is going to protect us. He's going to protect his people. You see what I'm saying? As long as we're doing what we need to be doing. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. You see that? Verse 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. You see what I'm saying? Because because the word of the Lord is power, Israel. You got to understand that. The words of the, the Lord is spirit and life and power. You see what I'm saying? Wisdom and knowledge. So if we put the word on, what's going what, what's going to form against us? Whatever's formed against us is not going to prosper. Whatever it is, plagues, uh, carnal guns, weapons, nukes, bombs, none of that stuff is going to affect us as well all right so he said against uh exalted against the knowledge of god and bring it it excuse me and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled okay let's head over to ephesians chapter 6 Verse 10 to 18. Ephesians chapter 6. Verse 10 to 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Because our God is of a full power, Israel. He is strong. You see what I'm saying? He is power. He is great glory. You see what I'm saying? In the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So we got to always remember that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, Israel. And, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You got to understand because you see what I'm saying? That's, this is, that's for a whole nother topic, but... You know what I'm saying? The Lord knows the kings of the earth and, you know what I'm saying, the wicked and what they plot against Israel and what they want to do and, you know, the governments and all of that. But the Lord, like I said, the Lord will never let nothing happen to us. As long as we're doing what we need to be doing and walking in the Lord, we have the protection of our God. You see what I'm saying? So we ain't got nothing to fear. All right. 
So, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Right? Wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God because his word is going to protect you, Israel. You got to understand that. You see what I'm saying? You got to understand it. Ain't no type of physical gun is going to be able to detect you. You put your trust in that. You don't know what you're doing. Put your trust in the Lord. You see what I'm saying? That's why Jesus said, he that live by the sword shall die by the sword. You see what I'm saying? So we put our full trust in the word of God because the word of God protects us. You see what I'm saying? We don't need to get carnal. We don't need no carnal guns and weapons. That's not going to protect us. But the word of God is. The word of God is spirit and life and power. You see what I'm saying? Wisdom and knowledge. We need to walk, put on Christ. He is the word of God. We need to walk in Christ. All right? So he said, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and have it done all to stand, Stand therefore having your loins girt about with what truth, right? With truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. That's why the Lord said here in um, Sirach. That's what he told us to do. Sirach, I think it's chapter. Chapter four and verse 28. He says, strive for the truth unto death. What is the truth? The truth is the word. Strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee, Israel, and the Lord shall fight for thee. So there's no need to get carnal or to worry about these carnal things in the world and what, you know, man can do to us because we don't fear man. You see what I'm saying? We don't fear principalities of darkness that rule the government, you know what I mean? And, and you know, the wicked government that sold out to Satan and all that. We don't need, we don't worry about that stuff because our God controls the light and the dark. He controls all things. He controls Satan. You see what I'm saying? So we need to fear him that can destroy the body and the soul in hell. Not what man can do. You see what I'm saying? But that's for another topic. Let's go back to Ephesians chapter 6. Um, 6 and 14. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the ble the excuse me the breastplate of righteousness. You see what I'm saying? The, the breastplate of righteousness. You see what I'm saying? Remember I was talking about you in, in the lesson, talking to you about the in the lesson, the works of the flesh, how we got to be all righteous before he planned us back in the land. We're not going back in there wicked. All right. So he said, having on the breastplate of righteousness, you see what I'm saying? So we want to be walking in righteousness. Christ is our, is our righteousness. He's the end of the law for righteousness. For we do the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. You see what I'm saying? So. Verse 15, and your feet shod with the preparation of what? Of the gospel of peace. You see what I'm saying? Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench. You're going to be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. You see what I'm saying? No weapon formed against you will prosper. If you walk in and doing what you need to be doing, Israel. Right? We staying away from that flesh, walking in the spirit. Okay? Um, verse 17, and take the helmet of salvation. And the what? The sword of the spirit, because the sword, you know what I'm saying? The sword of the spirit is the word of God. You see what I'm saying? The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You see what I'm saying? Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, not in the flesh, in the spirit. And we going to jump into the lesson about walking and living in the spirit and watch and watching there too with all preservedness and supplication for all saints. So 17 said, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, the sword of the spirit. Which is the word, which is the word of God, Israel. Right? Let's head over to Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. For the word of God is quick and what and powerful. So the word of God is quick and powerful. You see what I'm saying? Because the word is the spirit in life. And sharper than any two-edged sword. You don't need a physical sword here. This is what you need, the word of God. This is what's going to protect us in these evil times. Not putting our trust in carnal weapons and guns, but in the Lord Israel. And sharper than any two-edged sword, even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. You understand that? This is why I said in Revelation, he, had, he that had the sword, the two-edged sword out of his mouth. That's the word. He's the living word. The word of God. Christ. 
the word has a body. You see what I'm saying? That's why he said he shall smite the nations with the rod of his mouth. You see what I'm saying? The word. You know what I mean? So we got to understand that. So he said, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing, piercing, even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrows and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's why the Lord says, not my word like fire and like a hammer that breaketh the rocks in pieces. The word was made flesh, Jesus Christ. You see what I'm saying? So... Let's head over to um, Hebrews 13 and 6. So we don't need to fear Israel. Hebrews 13 and verse 6. So that we may, excuse me, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Why fear man? He's the creation. The Lord is the creator. Let's head over to Psalms 56 and 4. And we're almost done. We're going to jump straight into the lesson. Psalms 56 and 4. Psalms 56 and 4. In God, I will praise his what? His word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. You see what I'm saying? If you're walking in what you need to be doing and put on Christ and walking in Christ and crucify the flesh with affections and lusts and walking with that flesh and living in the, and walking in the spirit, you ain't got nothing to worry about, Israel. Psalms 118 and 6. Psalms 118 and verse 6. The Lord is on my side. The Lord is on my side. Great is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If the Lord be for us, who can be against us? The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? What can man do unto us, Israel? If we doing what we need to do and walking in the Lord. Walking in his word. What, what, what can man do unto us? Let's go to Isaiah 41 and 10. The Most High always told us he's always been with us. He always been with us. Even from the ancient times. And he's still with us even to even in the end times. Because he don't change. He's the same forever. That's why he's called the ancient of days. A thousand years is like a day. A day is like a thousand years. You see what I'm saying? He don't change. So he ain't forget us. Isaiah 41 and 10. He's still our protector, Israel. He's still our God. Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear thou not. He's talking to Israel, for I'm with thee, for I'm with you. Be not dismayed. Don't be terrified, Israel, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yeah, I will help thee, yeah, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Because he's a righteous and holy God. I mean, he always told to be holy, for I am holy. We are peculiar people above all nations of the earth. He still requires us to be that holy nation. You see what I'm saying? He don't change. He's a righteous guy. He do all his works in righteousness. He's a just and holy God, Israel. So, so we could be protected. We got to be walking in the Lord. Right? The right hand of my righteousness. Let's get this last verse and we're going straight into the le lesson. Second Timothy chapter uh, 1 and verse 7. For God have not given us the spirit of fear. So God have not given us the spirit of fear, Israel. But of power and of love and of a sound mind. So the Lord didn't give us a spirit of fear. We don't need to fear. We fear the Lord. Do what we need to do. He's going to protect us from anything the enemy try to throw our way. We ain't got nothing to worry about the fear if we're walking in the Lord. All right, so I hope that was very encouraging. For my brothers and sisters, um, to you strangers too, take heed to this too. You know, keep doing what you need to be doing. Keep your hand from um, doing any evil and keep the Sabbath day. All right, do what you need to do. I encourage you and pray for you also, okay? Now, let's jump straight into the lesson, Israel. We're going to go over now into the lesson of walking in the spirit. So, we must walk and live in the spirit, Israel. The children of the flesh, we're not getting into the kingdom. We went over this. Okay, let's jump straight into it. Let's head over to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 to 6. 
Let me see how much I got on here. Okay, we good. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 to 6. So I hope that was very like very encouraging for you, Israel, to my brothers and sisters around the world. If you're watching this, you know what I mean? And you're being discouraged and you, you, you're scared and, you know, because of what's going on, supposedly. And I um, hope that's to, to encourage you. That's why I always talk about um, building up our foundation, building up your foundation in your spirit so that you can be strong. You know what I mean? That's what it's about. Setting your foot in the soil and the ground firm. You see what I'm saying? So you can't be moved. All right? So I hope this was very encouraging for you. Because Christ is our peace. But in this world, we're going to have tribulation. But be of good cheer. He overcame the world as well. Ephesians 4, verse 1 to 6. So we did the flesh, right? Now we're doing the, the spirit now. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Right? Wherewith ye are called. Remember, we went over. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. No man could come to me except the Father draw him near, and I will raise him up at the last day. Excuse me. I therefore, the prison of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering. That's the fruit of the Spirit, Israel. For bearing one another in love. That's the fruit of the Spirit. That's part of the fruit of the Spirit. Love, long suffering. You see what I'm saying? So we got to walk in all lowliness, humility, and being patient and long suffering and walking in love. That's the fruit of the Spirit. There should be no pride and arrogance with us. That's why in the lesson um, I went over with you when I was saying, you know, for us to love our enemies. You know what I'm saying? Pray for them that despitefully use you and curse you. You know what I mean? Um, give your enemies water and food. You know what I'm saying? If they smite thee on that cheek, turn that right cheek. You know what I mean? So it's like, turn that right cheek also. So it's like, you know, are, are we willing to do this? Are we willing to be the children of God? You see what I'm saying? Or we have pride in us. You see what I'm saying? So it goes back to us being given to Christ. That's how we would know. All right. So we're with your call. So we said with all lowliness and meekness and with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, Israel, in love, Israel. Because if we can't love ourselves and our people, how can we love God whom we have not seen? You see what I'm saying? For bearing one another in love, endeavoring to the unity of the spirit, of the spirit, not the flesh, of the spirit in the bond of peace. You see what I'm saying? Christ is our peace. That's why he said, um, in the world, you shall have tri tribulation will be a good job to overcome the world. I mean, he might have peace. That's why he's called the Prince of Peace in Isaiah chapter 9 and 6. And I think in Acts, I think. It was Peter or Paul. He said, we killed the what? The prince of life. You see what I'm saying? So, endure, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. In Christ, we have peace, Israel. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are what? Called. So, it goes back to us being called. Remember, being called. We're going to talk about that later in the other law lessons down the road, God Lord's willing. So we are called, given to Christ, right? We got to be given to Christ, okay? Ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all, Israel. Let's head over to Ephesians chapter 5, Verse 1 to 19, be therefore followers of God as what well as their children. We're going to talk about the children part because we say we are the children of God. We are the Hebrew Israelites. So now we got to be Israel and walk and live as Israel. Just waking up, it don't end there. We got to remember that. Be therefore followers of God as their children and walk in love. That's the fruit of the spirit. As Christ also have loved us and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savior. Give me one minute.
all right, as a sweet smelling savior. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, that's the, that's the works of the flesh. That's part of the works of the flesh. Let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. We're going to talk about that down the road, God Lord's willing. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know that no whoremonger, no unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater have any inheritance in the, in the uh, kingdom of Christ and of God. We're going to talk about, you know, a little bit about the heir, the heir and uh, the inheritance and the children of God. We're going to talk about that. So the kingdom of Christ and of God, let no man deceive you with vain words. So take that in heed, Israel. He said, let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. But uh, be ye be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes in darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as the children of light, because the most high Jesus Christ is the light, and he called us the light of the world. Right? Because we gotta walk as we gotta walk in Christ. We gotta put on Christ. You see what I'm saying? Put on the word. You see what I'm saying? Put on the light, the word. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the spirit, for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to them that believe. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. For what the law could not do and that it was weak through the flesh, God sent forth his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and forced, uh, forced and condemned sin in the flesh. That we might be made the right, excuse me, I'm saying it wrong. In the likeness of sinful flesh and force and condemn sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, in Christ. Right? So he said, um, for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. That's why Christ said, he that doeth the will of my father is about doing the will of, of, of his father. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, verse 12. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light because what... what What's in the darkness eventually comes to the light. You see what I'm saying? What's in darkness eventually comes to the light. You see what I'm saying? So it's all it's gonna come, it's gonna shine forth. Alright? So he said, But all things are reproved, are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. That's why he said, Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. Wherefore he said, Awake. Thou that sleepest, sleepest and arise from the dead in Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, Israel. You see what I'm saying? So, oh, let's keep going. I'm sorry. Take to 19. And be not drunk with wine, be not drunk with wine, wherein is access, access, but be filled with the spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. You see what I'm saying? In the spirit, singing to ourselves songs and spiritual songs or songs. You know what I'm saying? Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Okay, let's head over to Galatians chapter five. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22 to 26. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. We went over that. Joy. Peace. 
right? That's what Christ said. In me, you might have peace, that you may have peace, but in the world, you should have good uh, tribulation, be able to have overcome the world. He's the Prince of Peace. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. You see what I'm saying? Because if you're led by the spirit of God, you are not under the law because you ain't going to sin. You ain't going to, um, the, the, the works of the flesh is, is crucified. You see what I'm saying? You crucified the, the flesh with the affections and lust. You are Christ. You are his. You see what I'm saying? So when he comes back, he's going to gather you. All right. So he said, um, let's read that again. 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy. Peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. You are Christ. If you're walking in the spirit, you are Christ. Love, joy, peace, long suffering. This is what we got to be doing. But not the works of the flesh. But the spirit, Israel. This is the fruit of the spirit. We must walk and live in the spirit until the end, Israel. Meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. 24, and they that are Christ, and they that are Christ, no man can come to me except the Father draw him there. And if, if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. Because if you have the spirit that raised up Christ in you, um, Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. You see what I'm saying? Because Christ was made a quickening spirit. Because if the same spirit that raised of Christ dwell in you, he will also quicken our mortal bodies by his spirit that's in you, Israel. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also what? walk in the spirit. Let's read that again. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desires of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. You see what I'm saying? That's why Paul said, where there's um, wrath and strife, are you not carnal and walk as men? The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, gentleness, goodness, long suffering, meekness, temperance. The fruit of the spirit. But that's why I ask ourselves. That's why I ask this, Israel. Are you willing to love your enemies? Are you willing to be the children of God? Are you willing to, to, to be the children of the kingdom, the children of light? A lot of our people are still holding on to the anger of what the nations did to us and everything. Remember, I spoke to you about that. God is the God of vengeance. He's going to repay. That's what the Bible says. And uh, what he said, and um, he's going to repay. Them that, that, that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me see. That obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. I think it was. Oh, I'm in the wrong one. I think it was First Thessalonians. And let's see what this. Second Thessalonians. Yeah, Second Thessalonians, chapter one, verse seven, uh, one, verse eight, seven to eight. And to who, to you who are troubled, rest with us, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. That's why. The Bible says our Lord is a consuming fire and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. So that's why I asked you, are you willing to love your enemies also, Israel? Are you willing to be perfect? Are you willing to walk to strive for perfectionists? Because Jesus taught us how to be perfect. So we got to ask ourselves, Israel, do we still have the anger? Do we still have the wrath, the strife against the nations? 
do we still have that? Because if we do have the wrath and anger and strife in us, then we are the children of the flesh because that's the works of the flesh. You see what I'm saying? That's the works of the flesh. Okay. Uh, so the fruit of the spirit, right? When we have the fruit of the spirit, this is what we'll be doing. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. We're walking in the spirit, not the flesh. Okay. Now let's head over to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 to 13. Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh. You see what I'm saying? Because it's all about putting off the old man and putting on a new man, becoming a new creature in Christ. It's uncircumcision and circumcision develop nothing but a new creature in Christ. You see what I'm saying? The old man is when we had the anger, the wrath, the strife, the wickedness. Now we put on a new man in Christ, a new creature in Christ, being renewed in the spirit of our mind. You see what I'm saying? Being renewed in the spirit of our mind. Okay, put that's putting on Christ because Christ is love. He is peace, long suffering, gentleness. You, know, you see what I'm saying? He's righteousness. So if we are Christ, we gotta be Christ. We gotta walk on walk in Christ. Be like Christ. You see what I'm saying? That's why he said, I and my father is one, that they may, the children whom God gave him, may be one as him and his father is one, that they may be one together. You see what I'm saying? We have to put on Christ. We have to put on the word of God, Israel. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called, remember, in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, that is, that which is called the circumcision, in the flesh made by hands. All right. That at that time you were without Christ. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. And strangers from the covenants of promise. Having no hope. And without God in the world. You see what I'm saying? Because like I said. The Jews that was scattered to all nations in this time. And the northern kingdom was scattered out. The Jews were called the uncircumcision. The Jews they were called the Jews that was living, that was born in all the nations under heaven. And you had the Jews that was born in the land. And you had the Jews that was scattered to the nations. Like Cornelius, he was living in another nation, but he was a Jew. So he was called unclean, the uncircumcision. You see what I'm saying? He was called the uncircumcision. But he still was a Jew just because he lived in another nation. They all came to, in the day of Pentecost... Jews came from all nations where they were born to Jerusalem. That's still their homeland. That's why God told Peter about the unclean and the clean. Call no man thou common unclean. You see what I'm saying? Because through the gospel, we're washed. We're, uh, through the gospel, the word of God, we're clean. We're, we're washed through the word of God. You see what I'm saying? That's how we become clean again. So it's the same thing. Just like at that time when Jews was living in every nation under heaven, in the time of Paul and Christ, and they were called Gentiles. You see what I'm saying? That's why Peter would eat with the Gentiles sometimes. And uh, when the circumcision came, the Jews that was there in, in the homeland, Peter withdrew himself, fanned them of the circumcision. He was sitting with Jews. He was sitting with Israelites that were called uncircumcised. They were called Gentiles because they were born in different Gentile nations. They took on the customs of Gentiles, became Gentile minded, and they were set, uh, worshiping idols and doing the works of the flesh. But the gospel, if, if they hear the gospel and believe, they're clean. They make, they're made clean through the gospel. You see what I'm saying? It's the same thing today. We're Israelites. We're Jews living in all nations under heaven. We're still scattered from 70 AD. So we hear the gospel. That does that, Just because we're born in different nations does that not make us Israelites Jews of course it do we just the same thing as they were they were born in different nations they were still Jews they were just called unclean but we're made clean through the gospel through the word of God that's why the gospel has to be preached into all the nations so Israel can hear it and believe in the gospel of Christ to be saved but that's for another topic all right so where was I um 
Let's go back to 12. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. So I also want to talk about that, not only talking about only to the Jews that were under all nations under heaven, but it's also talking to the northern kingdom too that was out there. You see what I'm saying? In the time of Christ and Paul. Because the gospel got to get to the northern kingdom too because through Jesus, Judah, and the, the northern kingdom is reconciled back to God through the gospel, through the word of God. If they believe in Christ, if they believe in the word. All right. And strangers from the covenants of promise and having no hope and without God in the world. Verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Are made now by the blood of Christ. Okay. Okay, now. You see what I'm saying? Because once we hear the gospel and we believe, you see what I'm saying? Um, we believe in the gospel because the word cleanses us. So we don't do the old stuff as we was doing. Sacrifice, you know, worshiping idols and, and, and the works of the flesh. You see what I'm saying? We're a new creature in Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek. You see what I'm saying? It's talking to both Israel, though, because we're one in the body of Christ. We are his then. You see what I'm saying? If we are, that's the point. We got to be born again. You see what I'm saying? So, but we're going to talk about that as we keep going. Now, let's head over to 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1 to 2. Times pass Gentiles in the flesh because it's time for us to put on the new creature in Christ, the new man. And putting off the old man, Israel. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Um, We know Paul is an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. He's a Jew. So when he say brethren, his brethren is Israel. He let you know that in Romans chapter 9, verse 1 to 8. Ye know that ye were, ye were, so notice he said, ye know that ye were, what? Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Goes back, like I said, our people were walking in the flesh. Our people that was Jews that was born in different nations. They still were Jews, they were Israelites, they were just taking the customs of that land, wherever they were born at, that country. Worshiping their gods and doing the works of the flesh. But now they're a new creature in Christ. They're born again. You see what I'm saying? Through the gospel, through the word of God. So in times past, putting off the old man, putting on the new man. All right. Staying away from that flesh. And walking in the spirit. First Peter, let's head over to First Peter, chapter four, verse one to five. First Peter, chapter four, verse one to five. For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, because we got the mind of Christ. Who know the mind of the Lord? But we got the mind of Christ. If we're born again, if we're staying away from the flesh and walking in the spirit, we put off the old man, put on the new man. The circumcision of Christ is the putting off the uh, sins of the flesh, the body of the flesh. So he said, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind, for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. So he that suffered in the flesh, Christ hath ceased or ceased from sin. He stopped. You see what I'm saying? He was made a quickening spirit. The Father raised him up from the dead. You see what I'm saying? And if the same spirit that raised up Jesus dwells in us, he's also going to quicken our mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in us. We are Christ. Then the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. So he that suffered in the flesh, Christ have already suffered for us in the flesh. You see what I'm saying? Because God made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. For what the law could not do, because the law is spiritual, but we were carnal, sold under sin, and the carnal mind is enmity against God. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through what? The flesh. God sent forth his son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You see what I'm saying? 
cease from sin, verse 2, that he, meaning Christ, no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lust of men, but to the will of God. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with affections and lusts. Um, let's read verse 3. For the time past of our life may sufficient us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walk. In lasciviousness, lust, that's the flesh. When Paul, when, when you hear what Paul say in times past and when we walked, that's it. he's talking about the old man. You see what I'm saying? The old man, the works of the flesh, what we used to do. Because now he's talking about here now in the front, us being the new creature we are, the new creature in Christ. The new creature in Christ, we're not dealing with the flesh no more. That's our old life. For time past of our life may sufficient us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles when we walk in lasciviousness, lust, access of wine, revelings, bequittings, um, and abominable idolatries. This is all the works of the flesh with the Gent with which the Gentiles do. They don't know the Most High. You see what I'm saying? They, this is what they do. And before we came into the gospel, into the into the truth, we was doing these things. You see, what I'm saying this, we, we we were doing these things. But if we're a new creature in Christ, we don't do those things no more. We're, that's old. We don't walk in the way of the Gentiles what they do anymore, because we're a new creature in Christ. Verse four, wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same access of riot, speaking evil of you, because. You you changing yourself. You see what I'm saying? You're not doing the old thing that you used to do with your friends or your family. You know what I mean? And they're going to think it's strange. Think it's strange that you're not doing the same thing. You're not running with them to the same essence of right. So they're going to speak evil of you. You know what I'm saying? So you got to think about it. Because you're changing yourself. And when you change yourself, you're going to see people start detaching from you. Because they still stuck in the old man, and you're trying to, and you're and you're you working out your own salvation with fear and trembling, and you and your walk in your new creature in Christ. You put off the old man, you trying to walk in the new the new man, and they're still stuck in the old man, and you know think they're gonna think you know speaking evil of you because you're not running doing the same things you used to do. So you gotta understand that Israel. Uh, what I said, verse five, who shall give account? They're going to give account to him. That's Christ. That is ready to judge the quick and the dead. You see what I'm saying? So you got to understand that. So that's the old man putting on a new man, walking in the new man, walking in the spirit, staying away from the flesh. The old man is real. All right, let's head over to Ephesians chapter four. Ephesians chapter four. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 to 32. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not at other, excuse me, walk not as other Gentiles walk. You see what I'm saying? In the vanity of their mind. You see what I'm saying? Because they worship devils. Their idols, their gods is wood and stone. You see what I'm saying? They don't know the living God. But that's why I encourage you strangers that's into this, into the truth and cleaving to the truth that you do what you need to do. You see what I'm saying? Because in the old ancient times, um, there were strangers in the land. Like I said, there were strangers in the land. You see what I'm saying? And it's going to be like that in the end times. Um, you know, but the, the, the strangers is going to, you know, build up Jerusalem and serve Israel. You know what I mean? But this is what it is. This is this is what the word of the Lord says. You know what I mean? But you'll be with Israel. You know what I mean? You'll be in the land. You know what I mean? Um, Because like I said before, the strangers was in the land before. They could come in the land and keep the law. It'd be one law for, for them and for Israel in the land, though. You see what I'm saying? Um, because like I said, the Gentiles, the strangers that did cleave, you know what I mean? That came into the land and stuff. They, 
They are what? Servants and handmaids. You see what I'm saying? They are servants and handmaids. That's why he said the aliens shall um be your plowmen and build up your walls in the end times. Because when you come back, it's going to be, you know, nothing new under the sun. You know what I mean? The most high don't change. Um, so, but I encourage you, you strangers, the Lord have not separated you from his people. You just need to do what you need to do. Keep your hand from doing any evil and keep the Sabbath day. All right, let's get back. And he said, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth, Israel, walk not as other Gentiles walk. Because remember, we just went over, you still put on, you was an old man, now you put on the new man. You was running to the same excess as right as them, as you used to do when you was in your old man before coming into the knowledge of the truth. You know, tasting the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. You see what I'm saying? You was in, we was in the old man, <clears throat> Right? And he said, Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind because they don't know the truth. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God due to ignorance that is in them. Let's read that again. Having the understanding darkened because the Lord, he only gave the law to the Israelites. He have not, he, his word and statutes to Israel, he, don't, he didn't deal with any other nation. It's for his, um, his, he said, he has showed his word unto Jacob, his law, statutes, and commandments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. As for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise you, the Lord. That's why he said, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. I have known my name in Israel. Ezra even says, that any other people that know thee beside Israel, so shalt thy name be found in Israel. So the Gentiles don't know the Most High. You see what I'm saying? Having the understanding darkened. Being alienated from the life of God because they worship idols and devils. They don't know the, the one true living God. You see what I'm saying? The life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past filling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness. See, this is all the works of the flesh. To work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so, be that ye have heard him. You see what I'm saying? And have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. That ye put off concerning the former conversation of what? The old man, Israel. Of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. That's the works of the flesh. Lust and um, murderings and drunkards and rivalings. And wrath and strife and envy, that's all the works of the flesh. We went over that. If we doing that, we ain't entering the kingdom of God. To the deceitful lust and be renewed where? In the spirit of your mind. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You see, this is why Paul said this here. In Romans chapter 7, verse 22, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. One thing you got to understand is we are spiritual people. We are the children of promise, not of the flesh, Israel. Excuse me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man because the carnal mind, the flesh, the carnal mind is enmity against God. It's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So we could not keep the law of God through the flesh. So that's why the Lord sent forth his son made in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That's why the Bible said he put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. This man, after he offered one sacrifice for sins, which was himself, Jesus Christ, um, sacrificed for sins forever. But if we sin willfully, we have no more remaining sacrifice. But of a fire, a looking for a fiery judgment from the Lord. So that's the reason the carnal mind is enmity against God. But when people say, well, you know, we got to keep the commandments of God, they're not teaching our people how we're supposed to keep the commandments of God. They're actually trying to keep the commandments of God through the flesh. And we can't do that. Our forefathers couldn't do it. That's why they always transgressed the, the, the laws of, and statutes of the commandments of God. We went over about the lesson of, of, of um, the Lord will give us a new heart. And put a new spirit within us. If you haven't seen that, go check that out. Um, 
So the carnal mind is enmity against God. It's never subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. That's what the Bible says. To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. But they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So that's why he made his son, his son in the likeness. He um, sent forth his son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So Paul said, but I see another law. So he said, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Not through the flesh. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind because that flesh you see what i'm saying we trying to fight that flesh we trying to serve the law of god in the inward man but we got that flesh constantly coming at us this is why we got to walk in the flesh and we won't fulfill the deeds of, of the oh excuse me we got to walk in the spirit so that we cannot so we won't fulfill the deeds of the flesh so he said warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity but christ has said it was free as well Bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is where? Where's the law of sin? Which is in my members here in the body, Israel. In the body. That's why Paul said in, in, in Romans 7 and what? That's what he said. In, in verse uh, 14. For we know that the law is what? Spiritual. See, the law is spiritual. There's nothing wrong with the law or the commandments. It was wrong with us. We were carnal. We are carnal. The carnal mind is enmity against God. So he said, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am what? Carnal sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Because when you want to do good, that evil is with you. Your, your members is, is, is attacking you, your flesh. You don't want to do the things that you do, but you do it anyway. It's because of sin. You see what I'm saying? For, for that which I do, I allow not for what I would, that do I not, but what I hate, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, so he's saying the things that you would do, the things that you would do, excuse me, if then I do that which I would not, so if you're doing the things you wouldn't do, but your body, your flesh is, is, is coming at you. I can send unto the law that it is good because there's nothing wrong with the law. Now, then it is no more I that do it. So he said, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. It's the sin that dwelleth in us. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good things. This is why the Lord said the works of the flesh. We are not entering the kingdom of God. We got to be given to Christ. The same spirit that raised up Christ have to be in us. For I know that is in me, that is in my flesh, dwell of no good thing. For the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. For the good that I would, I do not. Excuse me. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find in the law that that when I would do good, good, evil is present with me. So he said, now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. The sin that is dwelling in us, in our members, in our flesh. So that's why the Lord, the Lord sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law, which is spiritual and the commandments is holy, just and good. Might be fulfilled in us, um, will be fulfilled in us if we walk away from that flesh and walk in the spirit, Israel. Do you understand? He made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him, so that the law can be fulfilled in us. The law is spiritual, the flesh and the spirit is contrary to one another, it's, it's contrary. You understand? All right. So that's why he said, um, let's, let's read 23 again. Romans 7, 23. But I see another law of my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Oh, wretch man that I am. Because he's saying, oh, wretch man that I am. 
You see what I'm saying? Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with the mind, the law of God in the inward man, excuse me. I must also serve the law, the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Romans 8 and 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them. There's no condemnation to them which are which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. If we live in the spirit, uh, uh, if we walk in the spirit, let us also live in the spirit. No, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Where we left off at. Ephesians uh, 4 and we left off at 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So with the mind, I must also serve the law of God. I delight in the law of God after the inward man. And be renewed in the spirit. The spirit, Israel, of your mind. And that ye put on what the new man, and that ye put on the new man, not take off the old man. Because circumcision and certain uncircumcision don't avail of nothing. This is why the Sadducee Jews and them couldn't understand Christ. Because they thought, oh, we got the law of Moses and we're circumcised. That that's gonna be it. That's why he said, Except he told Israel, set your righteousness exceed. We gotta exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. You, you shall know, and if your righteousness don't exceed. The, the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven because the, the law of Moses is still, that veil is still on their heart, but it's taken away through Christ. That's why they couldn't see it. They couldn't see it because they were still stuck on the, the law of Moses. They were still stuck um, in, in, in the, uh, how can I say? Yeah, they were stuck in the law of Moses. They were still, you know, Thinking that that was the way to do it. You see what I'm saying? Which all Israel sent. That's why the Bible says all have fallen short of the glory of God. Judah in the southern kingdom. That's why the Lord made the new covenant with us. Because we transgress and broke his command, his old covenant. You see what I'm saying? That's why he said, I will, um, behold the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of uh, Judah and the house of Israel. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I brought them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break. You see what I'm saying? Even Daniel said it. <laughs> Even Daniel, when he was in the Babylonian captivity, he understood. He understood. He knew all Israel broke the law and the covenant. Daniel chapter 9 and 11. Yeah, all Israel has transgressed thy law, even by the part that we might not obey thy voice, the word. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us and the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him. In Deuteronomy 28, the Most High told Moses to tell us if we broke his covenant, the curses would come upon us. So we broke his covenant. That's why he had to make a new covenant. And he have conformed his words, which he spake against us. And against our judges that judged us because the most high ain't forget. He knew we broke his covenant. Even time went on. He, he already see he sees all things, the most high. He spake against us and against our judges that judged us by bringing upon us a great evil for under the whole heaven have not been done as have been done upon Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this evil will come upon us. Yet may we not our prayer before the Lord our God that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. You see what I'm saying? His word. Therefore have the Lord watched upon the evil. It brought it upon us. For the Lord our God is righteous in all his works, which he doeth. For we obey not his voice, his word. And we still don't obey his voice, a lot of our people. And his word was made flesh and walked and, and talked with, with us. Jesus Christ. You see what I'm saying? So... The Sadducee Jews and them was still in the law of Moses. Which the, he already made the new covenant with us. You see what I'm saying? As he said, behold, the days come when I make a new covenant. But that's for something else. All right. That's for another topic. Let's get back to Ephesians chapter 4. And we left off at 24. And that she put on a new man, which after God is created in what? In righteousness and true holy. For I am holy, ye be holy. He still required that from us, Israel. 25, wherefore, put away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another, because love is the fulfilling of the law. 
Love is, 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 is the fruit of the spirit. You see what I'm saying? We are the church of God. You see what I'm saying? We are the church of God. We are the temple of God. He brought us with his blood. We are not our own. You see what I'm saying? Put your bodies as living sacrifices to the Lord, which is your reasonable service. All right. So he said, um, putting, uh, wherefore put away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one of another. You see what I'm saying? We are members one of another. We the church. We are the body of Christ. He is the head. We are the spiritual house of God, Israel. Not a physical building made with hands. Us, our body, is the temple of the Lord. Our members of one another be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole still no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. You see what I'm saying? This is why um, Jesus destroyed the works of the devil. You see what I'm saying? When he died on the tree on that cross for us, you see what I'm saying? We believe in him. He reconciled us. Through him, we reconcile back to God. You see what I'm saying? Because we're going to talk about that a little bit later, though. All right. So Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. All right. Where did we leave off at? Uh, let me go back to Ephesians. Which is good. Let him labor working with his hands. 28. Uh, Ephesians 4 and 28. With his hands, the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. We're going to talk about the seal, like I said before, down the road, God was willing. 31. Let all bitterness and wrath, let all bitterness and wrath and anger, that's the works of the flesh, and all clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be kind one to another because love is the fulfilling of the law. We are love one another, Israel, and love your enemies. And be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Let's head over to Galatians chapter 3, verse 10 to 17. And have put on the new. Matter of fact, I'm sorry. Let's start at. Excuse me. Let's start at Galatians chapter 3. In verse 5, mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. This is all what? The works of the flesh. And we know the works of the flesh, we not enter in the kingdom of God. For which things sake the wrath of God come on the children of disobedience, in the which he also walked sometime when ye lived in them. See how I was telling you how Paul would say, in times past, because we're putting on the new man, we got put on the new man. That's the things, this is all the stuff he's saying, the rap, the enemy strife, the murder we used to do. Now we put on the new man, we're walking in the spirit. And the which ye also walked sometime when ye lived in them. But now, ye also put off all these. What else? Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. See how we talking about the new man. The wrath, all of that, and it's the anger that's of the flesh. Um, out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off what? The old man with his deeds. And have put on what? The new man, the new creature in Christ, which is renewed in what? Knowledge. Understanding Israel. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Being born again. Washed in the word. 
renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Wherefore, there is neither Greek nor Jews, nor circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. We're going to talk about that down the road, God loves willing. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. The fruit of the Spirit is wrath. These are the things of the Spirit. Meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. If you have anything with anybody, Israel, forgive them. Because Christ forgave you for what you did to people. You see what I'm saying? He forgave you for what you did to people. We got to forgive so we can be forgiven. We got to forgive people so that we can be forgiven for the things we've done to people. This is the new man, Israel. This is why I'm trying to. This is why I'm trying to explain to you, you know, that just waking up as Israel, that's not where it ends. Now we gotta walk and be Israel. You see, we we're being tried as gold in the fire. So now we gotta walk and be Israel. This is what the Lord requires. Remember, I told told you, do what the Lord says. If we do what the Lord says, we're gonna be protected. If we don't, we in trouble. So if we ain't if we ain't got Christ on, and when the evils and all this stuff comes upon the earth, we ain't gonna be protected by the Lord. All right. So, like I said, just waking up as Israel, we gotta. It's not. It's, don't end there. We gotta walk and be Israel, the children of light. Stay away from the flesh, walking in the spirit. Even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. You see what I'm saying? This is pride is not with the father and arrogance. You see what I'm saying? Pride is of the world. So we gotta be able to forgive and love our enemies and walk in love and you know what I'm saying in the spirit. You know what I mean? We don't render evil with evil, we defeat evil with good. What they do to us, we do we do good. So that we could be perfect, the children of the kingdom, Israel. Are you ready to really waken up to Israel? Ask yourself that. So he said, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectionists. It's not all about self. We got to remember that too. You got to remember that it's not all about self. Do for others. Others and people in need. They need a hand. They need you to talk to them, uplift them. They need one another burdens, Israel. It's not all about yourself. You see what I'm saying? Are you willing to put someone else above you? Your own self? It's deep. It's deep, Israel. It's deep. You see what I'm saying? It's not all about self. It's, it's um, you know what I'm saying? Doing for others also. All right. Let's keep going. Which is the bond of perfectionists. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. To the which also ye are what? Called. Notice the Bible says called. It's very important. Called. In one body. And be and be ye thankful. Uh, let the word of Christ dwell in you. Dwell in you richly. In what? In all wisdom. Because he is the word. He is the wisdom. The word of God most high is the fountain of wisdom. He is wisdom. He's the word of God. He's the word of life. Jesus Christ. In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. We went over that in another chapter. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. All right. So now. See. Walking in, putting away the old man, walking in the new man. That's very important. Let me see where I'm at. Okay. All right, Israel. So I'm coming to an end. We left off on Galatians. I got to remember that. 
Now we heading over to. We gonna head back to 